What is grieving? Welcome to Floss First Corner. I'm John. What is grieving? Well, the standard definition of grieving is deep mental anguish over usually the loss of a loved one. So someone in your life who has died catalyzes grieving. And grieving, there are so many different ways that people do it. And it's a universal phenomenon because at some point, except for the very young, most of us are gonna experience the loss of a loved one. People throughout the ages have devised different attitudes and strategies of how to go through the grieving process. Everybody's got a different way to do it, you know, but what is it? In terms of philosophically, uh, you know, the phenomenology of it, like I said, young, the young, the innocent, people who haven't had a chance to get into life and really start to look into the eternal nature of their being and still have their innocence and haven't really pondered their own mortality yet, they don't really have to deal with grieving in the same way that those of us who have matured and come into some level of self-realization and looked into the world and felt our impermanence while still yearning for a permanence. Grieving is that area where the intellectual nature of knowing that we'll die or knowing the intellectual nature of impermanence is made emotionally and viscerally extremely real. Losing a parent, a sibling, a spouse, a loved one, having them pass away. Nothing rivals that loss. And it makes the philosophical notion of us being temporary extremely real. It brings up all the memories of the person. It brings up all the possibilities of what can be, of what could be. And it certainly seems to set off an automatic self-reflection system of our own mortality and usually compressed into a very small window of time. Along with the fact that whoever else knew that person is also going through the same readjustment. You know, the Stoics, they, they would say, you know, that this is part of the attachment, you know, all the same as the Buddhists, like when the person passes away in the grieving process, you're feeling, you're feeling the attachment dissolve. And to the Stoics, one of their main practices was to intellectualize attachments in an attempt to dissolve them to an extent to not be emotionally dependent on them to be realistic about them and to accept the changes as they come and go and for other people it's a moment of great despair with no consolation and this is without religious context uh, you know, for religious people, it's, it's a different thing. If they have faith that the life continues, um, that helps ameliorate it a little bit. Uh, but in many ways, everyone's experiencing the same thing, no matter their philosophy. It's just deep loss and a very biological reminder that we're temporary. Now, the different attitudes taken towards this moment or when you're in that moment serve to heighten the contrast between life and death, the living and the dead. You know, fate mori, some of them say the, you just, you love your fate, you know, 
and the energies that arise in people, the memories that arise in people, the taste of death, being close to death, philosophically serves as a catalyst for the contrast of loving life. It ignites and reinvigorates the life within us, but while also mixed in with the sorrow of death and loss. And doesn't that seem to be the engine that life runs on? So in the process of grieving, all of the energy, energies of life sort of come to bear. Life, death, being social, being antisocial, because that person's no longer there. The effect of that person on the web of life that they were living, which of course triggers us to be reflective about our place and our position of our web of life. Whom do we affect? You know, like what, how do our actions ripple out amongst other people and the world in general? And how does that make us feel in relation to life itself? So in a way, when grieving occurs, everyone automatically involuntarily becomes a philosopher. You know, the old adage is that the true philosopher practice is dying every day. So for a philosopher, you could almost say that we're in a small state of grieving every day in terms of processing life and death and dealing with mortality and being aware of it and conscious of it. And part of the reward for being aware of the mortality and the consciousness in the present moment is that it gives a sharp contrast and an appreciation for being alive in the moment. And when people go through the grieving process, that tends to be the silver lining and the valuable wisdom in the experience is that in that sort of paradoxical way, death appreciates life. And it's even more than intellectual, the biology the human animal part of us feels it. In fact, in nature, when animals have strong traumas, whether it's uh, fights or uh, rough mating or uh, their version of grieving when they lose things, because animals have grieving too, uh, one of the first things they do is they, they shake it off. They do a physical shake off of trauma and so you'll also notice that when people are grieving, a lot of times they'll convulse a bit, you know, sometimes they'll pass out because the energy that's on them is so much that they're trying to get it off of them, trying to ground the energy, shake it off them, which is a healthy thing. Um, oftentimes in grieving, people will seek physical comfort from other people to basically try to disperse the emotional energy and obviously people, sometimes people do a lot of regression because that's a normal thing in the face of trauma is to put yourself in a previous safe space, basically, like emotional and psychological safe space. So regression can occur. And you know, ultimately, it's also a rite of passage in a universal experience that it can't be avoided when it, you know, it's, it's out of our control. When it happens, it happens. And 
you have to process the emotions. And that's why, you know, a lot of people, of course, the stages of acceptance in human psychology, denial is number one. And you can't get rid of denial. I have it, you have it, we all have it. The thing about denial is, in terms of making your acceptance process more efficient, if that's the thing you need to do, you just try to minimize the denial. But since denial also acts as a, sometimes like a safety buffer for sequencing of the processing of the energies, because they do change you, because grieving is also a period about readjusting your entire life, because that person that was there filled a lot of the routines and time cycles and dependencies and partnerships and relationships and coordinations about getting through life with that person that now instantly have to be reassessed and they get reassessed by your whole person, your mind, your body, your soul. And so it needs a buffer to sequence that so you don't have a nervous breakdown. So sometimes denial is a healthy delay while the body is processing the massive amount of change. And so in that way, denial can be a very useful timing mechanism that you know doesn't need to be sped up. But sometimes people, they'll stay in denial for a long time. And if they stay in denial for a long time during a grieving period, then that can lead to depression and anxiety and anything but emotionally processing the changes that are occurring. But once the denial phase of it goes through, which is Honestly, that's why the rites of passage like funerals and all of the other traditional human ways, group ways to process a death uh, are important because they help bring people out of denial and they help people have an emotional support system to process the change. Because really that's the main thing. It's, it's processing the change and allowing the attachment to dissolve in a peaceable, organic manner. And people have a number of different ways to process it, to get it out, to resolve it, and also of how to look into the perspectives of it. So yeah, philosophically, when it comes to grieving, it's about being close to death, feeling the temporal nature of life, the preciousness of it, allowing death to give contrast to the brightness of life, understanding the totality of someone else's life, seeing what it looks like when a life is completed, told its story, giving context on the person, and what that means for the living, to have context for the living, to be able to go about knowing that our connections and relationships are felt and honored by people whom we're living with all through paying attention to and honoring the feelings that we had uh, for the ones that we lost. So grieving is really, it's an emotionally and perspective rich time to go through and to go through it with a philosophical mindset, I think is extremely beneficial. Of course, it should never be done in an attempt to substitute your emotional processing because that's the most important thing is to emotionally absorb the moment because that's really what life is about. And then allow the mental aspect to come in and then the soulful aspect to be there. Um, but in the emotional processing, is where we really get the beauty and the truth of life, uh, especially in interpersonal relationships. And so feeling, being able to feel and process and be aware and be conscious in the moment of a grieving period is one of the most important time windows of our lives to really feel the true mechanisms of life at work when it's life and death coming together you know living beings coming together to honor the life and death of the person and 
surrendering to the inevitability of our mortality while bravely facing eternity together with other people. So an important part of the human experience. So grieving. Well, thanks for spending some time here at Philosopher's Corner. I hope you found it helpful. And uh, as always, have fun.